For 90 years, Bennett Water Systems has been solving problems for farm organizations on the western United States. Our automated systems will lower your cost and increase your yields and get water where it needs to be on time. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Ag Network, reporting to you here today with David Haviland, an entomologist with the UC Cooperative Extension based in, in Kern County. I uh, wanted to talk about pests of blueberries. You know, we talked about thrips, but the other key pest is grubs. Right. So what, what is the problem with having grubs? Right, so, so grubs are mainly a problem in the Central Valley, uh, but they're a scarab beetle. And so um, if you look maybe around May, you know, porch lights around a house in the Central Valley, you'll see a, about a half inch long brown beetle. So that beetle is called a, a chafer and most commonly we know them as pests of turf. So they, they lay eggs in you know, golf courses and turf, that egg becomes a grub, and the grub eats the roots of the grass. And these grubs in particular like shallow rooted plants like grass, they like a lot of organic matter, like what you get in the thatch layer uh, of a lawn, and they just mow those, uh, and they like a lot of humidity, and they just kind of mow those weeds, or those, uh, those roots off. Well, blueberries, unfortunately, from this standpoint, are almost like turf. They have lots of small roots. The root, root systems tend to be very shallow. And growers put lots and lots and lots of organic matter in uh, as part of their pH management programs. And so we've created, and, and there's um, drip, you know, drip systems. So we've created this perfect environment in blueberries for the grubs uh, on this, uh, this particular pest. So that, that, you know, that's the setup. Um, so what do growers do about it? Uh, it used to be, historically, they'd used imidacloprid. Uh, it's a systemic product, run it through the drip system, and it basically gets into the, you know, the soil, the plant takes it up, and, and the, they feed on it, and they, they could die. More interestingly and more recently, uh, growers are using entomopathogenic nematodes. So you basically take these nematodes, you put them in an injection system. Through the drip system, they're applied to the soil. And then these little infectious juveniles, what they're called, is they wiggle their way through the soil, they find a grub, they go in either through the mouth, through the anus, or through the spiracles, which is holes that the insects have on the side of their bodies to breathe through. And once they're inside the grub, they start mass producing. And within a couple generations that occurs over about a month, you'll get a couple of million of nematodes inside the grub. It makes the whole insides of it look like, uh, look like spaghetti and then eventually they just explode. Uh, the grub explodes, these millions of uh, little nematodes crawl around the soil, go find another grub, and start the process over. It and so it's pretty gross. <laughs> it's, it's pretty gross, but it's pretty awesome. Um, but you know, when people think of biological control, yeah. usually they think of parasitoids, or usually they think, you know, parasitoids are, are general predators. Um, but this is absolute biocontrol to its best. And you know, down below the soil where a parasitoid or something can't get, uh, these nematodes do a fabulous job. And growers that apply them typically can get season-long control uh, with this method, biological control, organically approved, um, but used in both organic and conventional orchards, safe for bees, safe for workers. Uh, it's actually a great system and it's been fun to help develop that and see it happen. Right now, is there a certain time of the year that you would inject something like that? Yeah, so most, um, so if you have a bad field, you could do it in the fall and that'll help set you up for a good year the next year. Uh, but some of the research we've done shows that you can do it in the spring. Uh, you just have to watch the label. I can't remember the exact temperatures, but on the label it's, you know, once soil temperatures reach, I can't remember what it is, maybe 70 degrees or something like that. Um, but if you follow the label uh, on the nematode products, it'll tell you the temperature they're active. Just watch your soil temperatures once they get up to that. Go ahead, you're do, do your injections, and from there, the, the nematodes will go seek them out and find the grubs and kill them. Great. Well, thank you, David. Read more about these things in California Fresh Fruit Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.